Welcome to a Legendarium special about Peter II, the degenerate playboy emperor of Russia. In this episode, we will learn about the grandson of Peter the Great who only held the throne for two years. Peter II, or in full Pyotr Alexeyevich, came into the world on October 23, 1715, in the city founded by his grandfather, St. Petersburg. When he was two years old, his grandfather, Peter the Great, tortured his son, Alexei, little Peter's father, on suspicion of treason. Before Peter the Great could pass sentence, Alexei died of his injuries. From that day on, reactionaries, who hoped to turn the clock back on Peter's modernization, saw baby Peter as their great hope. Of course, Peter I and his right-hand man, Alexander Menshikov, saw to it that Peter's wife, Empress Catherine, took the throne after his death in 1725. The boy who would become Peter II grew up in a world empty of love or care. His mother and father cared little for each other, while his father, Alexei, had lived in fear of his ferocious grandfather, Peter the Great. Uncaring nursemaids gave him wine as an infant to keep him from crying. Peter's tutors taught him a smattering of Latin and German, but little else. On the other hand, he became far better educated in lavish court entertainments. That suited Menshikov fine, for that would make Peter easy to control. During the two years of Catherine's reign, she left the empire to Menshikov, while she drank and danced through the night and slept through the day. The Empress's lifestyle led to weight gain, a fast pulse, and kidney stones. After her 43rd birthday, it became clear she would not live long. Menshikov persuaded her to sign a law of succession which would give young Peter the throne, but only if he married Menshikov's daughter. If that sounds like a power play, it's because it was. Catherine I drank her last drop of life on May 6, 1727. She left behind a court steeped in glittering excess, which included stunning balls, carnivals, jesters, and fireworks. Soon after the coronation, Menshikov engaged Peter II to his daughter Maria without bothering to consult the 12-year-old emperor. Maria Menshikov received the title of her imperial highness and a yearly allowance of 34,000 rubles. Unfortunately for Menshikov, Peter II found his bride deeply unappealing. In his letters, Peter II referred to her as the stone statue and the porcelain doll. To keep him from rivals for power, Menshikov moved Peter II into his palace and gave him a governess, as if he remained a child. However, when Menshikov suddenly fell ill, Peter II fell in with a youth named Ivan Dolgorukov. Dolgorukov urged Peter II to flee Menshikov's smothering power. Peter II fled to the Dolgorukov palace and broke his engagement to Maria. The Dolgorukov family then formed a commission to investigate Menshikov. They uncovered corruption on a staggering scale, showing that Menshikov used the imperial treasury as his personal piggy bank. They stripped him of his titles and lands and sent him on a vacation to Siberia. During the journey, Menshikov's third wife, Daria, died, but he arrived with his three children and eight servants in the village of Beryoz. Menshikov built a house and church for himself, saying, I began with a simple life and I will end with a simple life. He did not have to keep his pledge long, for he died in a smallpox epidemic on November 23, 1729. His family buried him at the altar of the church he built with his own hands. Back in St. Petersburg, Peter II devoted himself to hunting. Peter II cared little for sportsmanship, save riding fast and making lots of noise. That might not have been troubling if not for his constant binge drinking. He even set up tables while on the hunting trails so that he could gorge himself on huge quantities of wine and vodka. Nobody cared about his health except for his sister Natalia, the only person who really loved him. 
However, tuberculosis snuffed out her light when she turned 14, leaving Peter II without any good influence. Died in the wool reactionaries, the Dolgorukov family convinced Peter II to turn the clock back on his grandfather's modernizing revolution. They pointed out that the Navy swallowed up a lot of money that could go to court entertainment, so it proved easy to convince Peter II to slash funding for the fleet. To convince Peter II to move the capital back to ancient Moscow, the Dolgorukov princes assured him that Moscow offered much better hunting than St. Petersburg. The Dolgorukov family made both wine and women available to the boy emperor. Most unsettling, Peter II fell in love with his aunt Elizabeth, a daughter of Peter the Great. He even spoke of marrying her, but the church would never tolerate such a union. Besides, Ivan Dolgorukov already had an empress in mind for his puppet boy emperor, Ivan's sister, Catherine. To draw Peter II away from his aunt, the Dolgorukov family convinced him that Elizabeth already fell in love with a guards officer. Feeling betrayed, Peter II made great shows of affection to Catherine to make Elizabeth jealous. That extended to appointing Dolgorukov men and their allies to half the seats on the Supreme Privy Council. In November 1728, the court announced the engagement of Peter II and Catherine Dolgorukov. However, in a bad omen, as Catherine's carriage passed under the city gate, the gilded crown mounted on the carriage roof caught on a beam and fell into the gutter. Yet during the weeks leading up to the wedding, the Dolgorukov men kept Peter II entertained lest he change his mind. On January 6, 1729, only 13 days before the wedding that would make the Dolgorukov family supreme in Russia, Peter II attended the ritual blessing of the Moscow River. He played the role of a chivalrous knight, standing on the footboard of Catherine's carriage for hours in freezing weather in a show of his devotion to her. The next day, Peter's doctors found him stricken with fever. Soon enough, they diagnosed him with smallpox, which left horrible blotches upon his face. The emperor's lifestyle left his health frail, and it became clear he would not survive the spout with smallpox. Desperately looking for a way to cling to power, the Dolgorukov family persuaded Peter II to name his fiancée Catherine the new empress. If that happened, it would have ended the Romanov dynasty and launched the Dolgorukov dynasty. However, this scheme would not come to pass. In a vast palace, still decorated for a wedding that would never take place, Peter II rose from his bed on January 18, 1729, what should have been his wedding day. He gasped out an order to ready his sledge because he wished to see his sister Natalia, who died two years ago, the only person who truly loved him. He then collapsed and died. The Dolgorukov men desperately tried to install Catherine, on the throne. However, the rest of the Privy Council, no longer fearing the Dolgorukov family, instead chose to put a kinswoman of Peter the Great, Empress Anna, upon the throne. That wraps up this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.